Welcome to the Getting Started with Evoke Content video. If you're watching this video, then that probably means that you're accessing your site for the very first time. So I'd like to start off by saying welcome. Welcome to the DNN community, a global community of over a million people. You'll find that our community is very active online and all social media channels as well as on the main DNN site. Outside of the net, our community is also very active through our global user groups as well as by hosting and attending annual community and corporate-led conferences. So wherever or however you'd like to plug in, there's an avenue for you to do so. Now let's talk about the site. Upon new site install, the default template is of a fictitious bike company called Awesome Cycles. Now we use this Awesome Cycles company to show you how your website could be organized. You can easily update the look and feel, the page structure, and the content of the site. We simply give you this site structure as an example. And so as we scroll down the site, you can see we've got some content, we've got some footer content, we've got a rotator, a logo, and a site navigation or menu structure here. But in order to start editing content or managing the site, we must first log in. And since it's probably your first time logging into the site, you're most likely logging in as the host user. So to log in, I'll just click this login link here at the top right, and I'll log in as the host user. Now once you've logged in, the, probably the first thing you notice is this uh, black bar that spans the width of the page. This is the control panel, and this is where you're going to go to make any edits or site configuration updates. Now, as a host user, we have access to all possible menu options, but I'll note that based on the user's permissions, they may or may not see all of these options. And so you see as I scroll up and down the page that the control panel sticks to the top of the page, and it's always conveniently there for us if we need to make an edit at any time. And so the control panel has a lot of options, I and mean, we're not going to be covering all of them here in the Getting Started video, but we'll definitely dive deeper in some later videos. Now I'd like to talk about the two most elevated users in the system, the host and the admin user. With Evoke Content, you can host as many websites as you'd like, and the host user here has access to every site within the instance, and the admin user has site-specific access. And you can have as many host and admin users as you'd like. Next thing I want to do is create a new page. To create a page, I'm going to hover over this Pages menu and simply click Add New Page. Now we get a pop-up window here, and this is where we're going to be uh, filling in the information for our page. And you can see that with the red star indicating that the page name is the only required field. So we're going to name this page Locations. And beneath the page name, you can see a, a lot more uh, fields of information that we could add to this page. We also need to uh, tell the system where we want the page to live. And so I'm indicating that I want this page to be inserted after the home page. I also want this page to be included in the menu. Also, on the permissions tab, we can see the permissions that we're setting here at the page level. Now on the left hand side we have these security roles which are in the system. Some of these are in the system by default and some of these I've added here. This is just a way to, to categorize or organize your users. And as we go across the permissions grid you see that we can give these users uh, various capabilities. But right now I just want to give all users the capability to view the page. So I've configured my permissions, I've given the page a name, and I've told the system where I wanted it to live, and I've also indicated that I want the page to be included in the menu. So I'm just going to click Add Page here. And so now we've uh, created a new page called Locations, and you notice that the menu has updated here. Now you'll also notice that uh, we are in edit mode here. There are a couple of visual indicators that we're in edit mode, such as this edit page option turning blue, and we also see these black icons hanging off of the modules on the page. These are the module action menus here. Now by default, upon page creation, there's a one module, one HTML module that gets placed on the page. And we can access the properties of this module, we can hover over the crosshairs, and uh, we can move this module around simply by clicking uh, to any pane. We can also grab this module and start moving it and drag and drop this around if we like. Um, now we can also access the module settings and if we wanted to directly edit content we could hover over the little pencil icon and edit content. 
first thing I want to do is get into the module settings. And so I'm going to update the module title and I'm just going to change this to locations. I also want to point out the fact that we have the permissions tab here again at the module level. Now when we first created the page, we created the page permissions at the page level and we also have permissions here at the module level. So the combination of the permissions at both levels is going to give you a very granular permissions capability. So you can essentially turn on and off uh, pages to specific users or give different users the capability to uh, edit content in the module. So uh, right now I just want to leave this module the way it is as far as the permissions but just want to point out that we do have permissions at both page and module level. So I'm going to click back to the settings and I'm going to leave the title here and I'm going to click update. And so we see that the title has updated here on the HTML module. I'm going to hover over the pencil icon and click edit content here and we get uh, another pop-up window and we see uh, the editor here. And so this is referred to as the WYSIWYG editor which stands for what you see is what you get and it's meant to make it easy for your content editors to manage content it's a very Microsoft Word like experience and so uh, we've got a lot of functionality that you uh, would imagine such as bold italics and underline we've also got robust table support here and we've got uh, image and media management and you saw this blue box pop up. That was actually the autosave feature in action. So we've also got autosave. Now I've, I've copied some text. I just want to paste in some text that I've got here just to give us some sample content. And then what I want to do is insert an image. So I'm going to click into the image manager. And so we get this pop up window with this three pane view. And on the left hand side, I can see the folders that I as a user have access to view. Once I select a folder, then the middle pane uh, updates here and shows me the images uh, that I have access to. We could also upload an image if we wanted to by upload by clicking the upload button. I'm just going to select this uh, bike to image, and so we get a preview of the image here. We can also click on the properties tab and access some properties here. So I'm going to indicate that I want this image to be aligned to the right. I'm also going to add 15 pixels of space to the left and also 15 pixels of space to the bottom and I'm going to click insert so you can see that we have very easily been able to uh, publish some content or edit some content and now it's saved on the page now over here on the right hand side of the page I've kinda of got this blank area and I want to take care of that with some content so what I need to do is add a module to this area and so to add a module I need to hover over the modules menu and click add new module now if you're not familiar with .NET Nuke terminology I like to tell people that a module is to .NET Nuke what an app is to an iPhone it's just a way to extend the functionality of the platform or inject more functionality on the page now I can scroll all the way through here and we can easily find a module here in the system and you can see that we've got quite a few installed here. We can also filter these module by categories. So I'm going to select the common category and I see the HTML Pro module and as I hover my mouse over the module you'll see that I get a message that says that I can drag to add this module to the page. Uh, we're definitely going to drag and drop but if you're not the drag and drop kind of person you can just hover over these crosshairs and uh, select a pane here. So I'm just going to start dragging this onto the page and as I drag you see these blue regions come into view here. These are referred to as panes and so I want to drop this module here in the sidebar pane and to do that I'm just going to let go of my mouse button and the page will refresh and we can see uh, that now we have a new text HTML module on the page. So here again I can access the settings and just update the title and I can change this to contact us and I'll leave the permissions the way they were and just click update and so we can easily come back in and edit content here again so one thing I didn't mention was that we have in uh, the editor we have a template manager so I've previously created a template and you could easily create a template as well and uh, I've got this contact us template and I'm just going to insert it here and then I'm going to click save so within a couple of minutes we've been easily able to create a page and uh, edit some content and get a new module here with some content on the page and uh, 
as I was dragging the modules around, we saw these blue regions come into view. And so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the panes here. If you were wondering, you know, how the panes got on the page, uh, that's going to be up to the front end developer or the skin designer. But you can, while you're editing content, you can see where the panes are, which panes are available to you by clicking this view in layout mode. And so when we view in layout mode, here we can see the panes that are available to us. And uh, so it takes out all the guesswork of where you can actually uh, place these modules on the page. And so within a couple of minutes we've been able to log in create a page and get some content going and uh, so that's a wrap here for our getting started video be sure to check out some of our other videos where we're going to dive deeper into other functionality of the platform and what we've done here is just the tip of the iceberg we've got some top-notch search document management cloud mobile and social features uh, plus a whole lot more to come. So thanks for watching and welcome again to the DNN community.